Hi, how you doing? I'm Curtis Sherrod, and welcome to Top 3. Once again, we do what we do like we're doing it on TV, and I have a guest. A great guest. An illustrious guest. A guest who's talented when it comes to rhythm and moves and dancing and things of that nature. I would like to introduce you to my friend, Lacey Thomas. What's up, Lacey? How Thank you doing you, today? Thank you, Curtis. Wonderful introduction. I'm great. I'm great. Well, wonderful introductions for wonderful people. Thank you. And so you're here on top three, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions the way I do to all my guests. And okay. my first question to you is, you've been dancing for some time. You're like a choreographer of some note. Mm -hmm. How did this all happen? How did you become who you are? This is such a funny story to me because I did not grow up thinking I would be who I am today. Uh, for the simple reason, uh, I was groomed, trained under the director emeritus of the Dance Theater of Harlem, Arthur Mitchell, who passed um, about a month ago. And uh, I was primarily trained in ballet. And this was at the Dance Theater of Harlem. I did other things. I, I did other classes like modern, tap, jazz, African. But none of the, my classes included hip hop mm. at the Dance Theater of Harlem because that was not offered there. Um, so it wasn't until around, I'd say, like my mid-teens that I started to um, kind of get interested in the art of hip hop. And I always gravitated towards music. I'm always dancing. Ever since I was young, I was always in the way. I would look, a, look up to my older sisters as they danced and they would always tell me, Lacey, just be still. But I can never be still. And um, that's when I started to, you know what, Mom? Can I go to Broadway Dance Center just to take a, a hip-hop class, an open hip-hop class? I did that. The teacher fell in love with me. She was like, do you dance hip-hop on a regular? And I told her, this is my first hip-hop class ever. Mm. And she was like, wow, you should train here more often. I told her, unfortunately, I train heavily at DTH um, with ballet, but I will surely be back to take you know, your other classes. So from there, um, after I moved from Charlotte back to New York, um, my mom actually suggested, hey, Lacey, why don't you start your own open hip hop classes for the main reason I would always choreograph on my own in my room behind closed doors. Oh, so you're her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're that girl. I am that girl. So um, I, I would do it day in and day out. I would be blasting the music. My mom would be sometimes telling me, Lacey, please turn the music down. It's a little too much. See, turning the music down, that brings <laughs> us deeper into top three. Tell me uh, the top three songs okay. that get you motivated to do your thing okay. or the top three songs that inspire you that when you hear them you're always like uh oh uh oh I can't help it listen if I had to choose top three songs mm -hmm. that's a little difficult because I enjoy all music but I can narrow it down to the top three artists okay I can never deny a Michael Jackson song anytime Michael came on for some reason I I was able to choreograph any style to it but Hip hop came to mind more. What is it about Michael that you seem to appreciate? Um, I like I like how versatile he is. He isn't. Um, when I listen to his music, it always has a message. His words are always clear. You can understand um, his rhythm every time and. Every single song, it's completely different. It's all not the same. Mm. And I feel like even today on the radio, I don't find myself um, as inspired because everything sometimes tends to sound the same. Yeah, Man in the Mirror, one. Who's two? Janet. Oh, it's keeping it in the family. <laughs> keeping it in the family. Um, Janet. Janet Jackson is one of my top idols, right underneath Michael. And when did you realize, uh-oh, Janet got it going on? Oh, when I saw her HBO Live concert, I fell in love with her. Because when I was little, I wasn't really paying attention. Mind you, I was heavily into the ballet world. So Janet Jackson, I would hear her on the radio and stuff like that. But to research her, her movement and her, her music videos, her iconic music videos, I never, it never really dawned on me to um, dip, dip more into, you know, discovering how, what her style is. Mike Jack 1, Baby Sis 2, who's Tress? Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Gotta okay. go with Chris Brown. And what is it about Chris Brown? He's another one. He never sounds the same. I was reading on uh, Instagram one day. It's a post that came across uh, my page, and it said, what's three artists, or no, what's one artist that um, can never create a bad song? And I think everyone, even myself, I can create a bad dance. I mm -hmm. mean, everyone does it. Um, but if I had to choose, Chris is definitely one of those artists that he rarely 
has a bad song to me personally. So because of the uniqueness of your situation, it's rare mm -hmm. for someone to be versed and talented mm -hmm. in ballet mm -hmm. as well as being able to express themselves in the wonderful world of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Give me three ballet dancers that people should know about. People should know about? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you um, the late Arthur Mitchell, mm, number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. He was the first principal, African-American male principal dancer at the New York City Ballet, which was unheard of at the time. George Balanchine, who was running the company, it was a company of, you know, primarily, well, dominantly um, all white dancers. And uh, when he came from Harlem, he auditioned for George Balanchine, George Balanchine fell in love with him, and ever since then, he's been popping. <laughs> Arthur Mitchell, RIP. I actually saw some yes. footage with you at the service, giving your respects. Very yes, well done. Yes, yes. Number two, dopes. Number two. Hmm. If I had to choose, I would probably go with Misty Copeland. Hmm. Okay. Misty I would Copeland. probably go with Misty Copeland. And, and I know that may sound cliche, but um, I am a female, and I think it's really hard to be known as a, a strong presence as a female dancer in the dance world. Um, and I think that she does a pretty good job. Uh, a very good job. <laughs> very good job. I'm sorry, excuse me. A very good job um, of representing even dancers of color. Mm. And I know a lot of people, she gets a lot of backlash for that um, because she's not, you know, your typical like brown skin, brown skin dancer, but she, she is, you know, she is mixed. She does come from the and she makes it, descent, And she makes it happen. You know, and she makes it happen. She's a beautiful dancer. She works extremely hard. I can, I can see if she just got the spotlight right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But the girl works for all this publicity yeah, It's not nepotism. It's, no, it's earned. It's earned. Who's three? Who is three? Which is so cool. Here we are. Mm. We're delving into different cultural aspects of the world. And we're yeah. actually discussing your three... Yes people that in the field of ballet that you think the world should know more about. So we got one, Arthur Mitchell, mm -hmm. oh, super duper OG. Super duper. Let's just see, Misty Copeland, Arthur Mitchell. And you know what? I'm going to say my third person, my sister. Lacey? Oh, okay. <laughs> Y'all should know her. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would choose me, but I don't, I don't, I'm not conceding what, whatsoever. But I do want to choose my sister, Danielle Thomas. Oh, that's nice. As my third choice. And I am not only saying this because she's my sister, but I fell in love with ballet even more watching her. Mm -hmm. all of my childhood. So what are you up to these, these days? When people say, like, what is legacy? What is that? Mm -hmm. What are you up to? What do you do? Well, I am the head director of my own hip-hop-based dance company, Legacy. Um, I've grown over the course of, I'd say, five, six months. Um, I've grown to 16 members, and um, they all range from ages nine, I believe my youngest is nine, to 21 years old. And um, it's a beautiful experience because not only am I guiding them, I'm mentoring them, I'm helping them, I'm training them extremely hard. Um, it's also helping me to grow as an artist because I've dedicated so much time um, independently in my own world. I wanted to give back. And it's just when you hear God's plan, you work towards it, you can't ignore it. I've almost tried to ignore it, like, nah, I, I can't, I can't handle this. I'm not meant to do this, because I only, I started out with open, my own open classes, um, which grew and grew and grew, and I created a following, and that's when I wanted to branch off and create, why don't I just make my own company? And what's your mission? My mission is to share not only my talents, but the talents of others, and to express that versatile dancers are out there, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to focus and, and zoom in on technique first and then style, swag, all of that later. But if we establish the foundation, and as they say, it's ballet, if we establish the foundation, which that's my background, I can then teach other dancers who may not have the opportunity or can't afford even um, intense training in a ballet school. Mm. Um, and I do believe there are dancers like myself, which is kind of rare, that wants to um, kind of get a share of all art forms and not just one at a time. So I became bored with just doing only ballet or only contemporary. It became kind of like a, a burden mm. for me. And that was my impetus to be um, more versatile, 
to let the world see it, to let my kids see it. You want it out of the golden cage. That's you want right. it no boxes, no labels, no, no categories. You want it to be able to express yourself. That's right. In the lacy way. That's right. Well, Lacey, I'm hoping that you can lace us as well as the viewing, listening audience yeah. with some of the unique stylings that you bring to the game. So do you sure. happen to have any music or anything on you? I sure do, right on my phone. Oh, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm just, I'm going to bow out for a second. I'm going to bow right. out. I'm going to need the room. All right, all right, you know what? <laughs> These millennials, boy, they ask for it, they get it. <laughs> Introducing Lacey Thomas, y'all. You know, this is Curtis Ross Top 3. This is my girl, Lacey Thomas from Legacy. <laughs> Check us out next week when we do it again with another exciting guest. Say Top 3 to the people. Top 3. Curtis Rod's Top 